Welcome, friends, to the broadcast. I'm so glad that you've tuned in today. My son Aaron is with me, and we're going to be talking today about how grace empowers us to live the Christian life. You don't want to miss this broadcast. Tell your friends to tune in. Thanks so much, and God bless you. Welcome, friends. I'm so glad that you're here today. We're sharing my son Aaron's teaching on the abundance of grace. And we've been talking all week about how grace empowers us. Mm. And you said we're going to share in this broadcast about how grace empowers us to carry the light of God Mm. into a dark world. Yeah, you need God's grace to be in your life because grace empowers you to live the Christian life. You know, you aren't supposed to live the Christian life through your own strength, yes. through your own goodness, through your own actions, through your own intellect. You have to live the Christian life through His grace. You know, uh, it's been said that you cannot live the Christian life without the Christ life. Mm-hmm. And I believe it's so true. And one of the scriptures that you had in the teaching, I don't know if we went there this week yet, but is Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Mm-hmm. If the spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He will quicken your mortal body Mm -hmm. by his spirit that dwells in you. That's talking about that indwelling power Mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And we can live the Christian life because we have the very life, Mm -hmm. the very nature of Jesus in us. Mm -hmm. Amen. We don't just celebrate, as believers, we don't just celebrate the resurrection once a year on Easter Sunday. We celebrate the resurrection every day because that resurrection power is in us. Amen. As believers, empowering us to, to be who God has called us to be and to live, just to live as Christ in this world. So let's go to John 17 really quick. Um, this is uh, actually when Jesus is um, ministering to his disciples shortly. Uh, this is at the Last Supper before he goes to the cross. So this is one of his most important messages that he preaches to his disciples. And, um, you know, he prays for himself, he prays for his disciples, he prays for all believers, but this is, a, this is really uh, Jesus' heart for you here in John 17. We'll start in verse 13. It says, But now I come to you that these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. You know, Jesus, first of all, to, to live the Christian life, it takes joy. It takes supernatural joy. Amen. You know, it's been said that if the devil can steal your joy, he can take your goods. Mm -hmm. But if he can't steal your joy, Mm -hmm. he can't take your goods. You know, Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 says, The joy of the Lord is our strength. Mm -hmm. You need God's supernatural strength. You need his supernatural power to live the Christian life. And I love that he talks about joy right off the bat there. Verse 14, I have given them your word. You know, you need the Word of God to live the Christian life. If you think you're going to live the Christian life apart from the, the Word of God, you're, man, you're, you're, out, you're in trouble. <laughs> I've given them your Word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. You know, the Word of God separates us. The Word of God sanctifies us. The Word of God, Amen. Um, man, that's the light that we get to carry, His, His Word. So that's going to separate you from the world. Just, just living by the word of God will separate you Amen. from how the world lives. It'll separate you from the course of this world. Amen. I love what John goes on to say, or Jesus says here in John mm-hmm. 17, 15, I do not pray that you would take them out of the world, but that you would keep them from the evil. Mm-hmm. So Jesus did not pray that God would take us out of the world. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people trying to get away from the world. Well, we're not to love the world the Bible says, all that's in the world is less of the flesh, less of the eye, pride of life. It's not of the fa- uh, Father, but of the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. In 1 John chapter 2. But at the same point in time, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. I find it interesting that he says, I- I'm not praying that you should take them out of the world. You know, the, right. the enemy... The enemy's main focus on attacking believers is not to, to take them out of the world. He does kill, he does steal, he does, des- to des- he does destroy. But the main thing the enemy does is try to, to attack the purpose for you being in this world. Right. He tries to hinder believers from, from, from flowing in that power of God's grace. You know, if you're, if you're going nowhere, doing nothing, you're not like a big a target for the devil. Mm-hmm. But when you really begin to live with the purpose of God, you know, the enemy is going to fight you. 
Yeah. You know, the Bible actually says this in Hebrews chapter 10 that immediately after they were enlightened, they uh, had a great fight of afflictions. Mm -hmm. But you can win every battle through faith in Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's already won it for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. And by faith, you enter into that victory he won. Amen. So I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. So we're set apart from the world mm -hmm. by the word. Mm -hmm. And what we do with the word it is, is that's the difference between the world and the church. Mm -hmm. And um, in John 14, Jesus talked about this a little bit. In verse um, uh, 22, Judas asked him a question and he said, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that you will manifest, you'll, you'll reveal yourself to us and not the world? Jesus said in verse 23, and he said, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our abode with him. He that loves me not does not keep my sayings, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's uh, which sent me. And so what we do with the word makes a difference of how we operate in this world. The mm -hmm. world will set you up, the word, the word of God will set you apart from the world. Mm -hmm. You should spend time in the word every day too. That's, that's just like Amen. lighting your candle every it day. It gives me strength. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says, uh, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed, uh, uh, you know, according to thy word. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, with my whole heart have I sought you, God. Let me not wander from, you know, thy commands. Your word is a light unto my path, mm -hmm. you know. And, and so thank God a lamp unto my feet. The word separates us and the mm -hmm. word gives us light. The word strengthens us. Mm -hmm. You know, the word, yeah. the word teaches us how to live. Amen. The Christ life. Amen. The, you need the Word of God. You need grace to teach you. Grace is a powerful teacher. Grace, um, it doesn't teach you to sin, to, to turn. It, it draws you closer to Christ. No, anybody that's uh, seeing how, how much they can sin and get by with it, they, they don't really have a revelation of grace. And grace is a powerful you teacher. really have a revelation of grace, you're not going to want to sin more. You're going to want to sin less mm -hmm. because you'll find out in your spirit as a believer as yeah. a born again believer, you are actually sinless. Your your spirit is actually perfect and pure. That's what gives you the ability to live the Christ life mm -hmm. in this world. And uh, you know, some people who kind of um, kick against grace teaching, they want to they want to kind of stay wrapped up in legalistic kind of teaching, like performance based <clears throat> teaching, performance based. Um, types of things, you know, I like what the Bible says in Galatians 3, 24. It says the law was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Right. But now that you've been brought to Christ, now that, you know, the, the law can point people's flaws out, but it can't, the, the law cannot free people. The law cannot transform people. The law cannot empower people. Right. Grace is what frees you. Grace is what transforms you. Grace is what empowers you. Grace is what um, empowers you to live the Christian life. It's not the law. It's not going back to that schoolmaster. Right. You know, once you've graduated elementary school, you don't, when you go on, you know, I, I have a lot of education. I have a doctorate from Rice University, but when I, when I went to get my doctorate, I didn't, you know, raise my hand and ask the professor, you know, hey, may I use the, you know, go to the bathroom. May I get the bathroom, the hall pass. <laughs> you know, when, when's recess going to be? When, when's my milk and nap time going to be? When, you know, I, I, I was past you that. You graduated from I graduated, law school. yeah. Amen. And as believers, we should graduate from law school. We should have a new teacher, a new professor, which is grace. Yes. The Spirit of God now leads us and guides us as sons and daughters. You aren't you know, just little Bible kindergartners says that anymore. We're no longer under the law, because, uh, but under grace. Yeah. And because of that sin, no, it says this in Romans 6, 12, and, and verse 14, one of those verses, but it, it's both talking about the same thing, but it says sin will ha not have dominion over you because you're not under the law, mm -hmm. but under grace. Mm -hmm. So grace really freed us. Mm -hmm. And what Paul's talking about in Romans chapter 6, uh, he's actually saying, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He answers that question. And he, in the strongest language that he can say without being offensive, he says, God forbid, mm -hmm. in Romans 6, verse 2. 
And, you know, but if, if people never ask the question when you teach, what are you saying, Pastor, that we're just supposed to go out and live in sin? Then you have not adequately taught grace. Mm -hmm. But when you teach grace and the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, people will ask that question. But then Paul answers it. And he says, really, in Romans 5, we've left the reign of sin and death. And we've come into the reign of grace and righteousness by faith in Jesus. But now, since we live in the reign of grace and righteousness, uh, sin no longer has uh, authority over us because mm -hmm. we're dead to it. We're free from it. We have authority over it. And it's stupid. It'll kill mm -hmm. you. And we if don't someone, want if someone's sin. just living in, in just a reprobate, rebellious life, they aren't no. allowing grace to teach them. They aren't allowing the Spirit of God to lead them. They're just listening to their flesh. They're just living like the world in a... I have a question if they're even born again, mm -hmm. really. Um, you know, there's a person that used to lead this great ministry, and then he had a, a very, you know, personal problem. I ble actually believe that was going on for a long time, mm -hmm. but he kept it fairly well covered. And, you know, recently it came out, you know, that he's done something like this again, or people with continued it, yeah. Yeah, and so people were asking me, do you need to go, or do other pastors in the community need to go to him? I'm like, no. He wouldn't even listen to the advice he got right from his counsel around him. He didn't follow through with that, mm -hmm. which I believe is part of the reason he relapsed mm -hmm. and went back. But I have a question. Number one, was he ever born again in the first place? Or number two, is he reprobate? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if you're really born again, I don't believe you want to see how close to hell you can live and still make heaven. Mm -hmm. And I believe Jesus is really addressing this here in John 17. Listen, when you have the word and the word is lighting your path, the world may hate you, but you're mm -hmm. set apart from the world mm -hmm. by the word and, and the way we're, and, and he says, and, and now being set apart from the world, you're sent to the world. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, for their sakes, I sanctify myself. You know, sanctification, what sanctification will do for you as a believer, it, living the sanctified life will help you have a stronger testimony in this world. Mm -hmm. And you know, one reason, right, that I don't want to sin, that I don't want to live in, in sin, right, and, and, and just rebellion. Number one is I don't want to ever do anything that violates my personal relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Number two is I respect my relationship with your mother, with my wife. I don't want to do anything that would discredit her Mm -hmm. I don't want to do anything that would hurt you and your two brothers, mm -hmm. right? I, because it, sin is very expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't want to do anything that, you know, would violate my relationship with Jesus, violate my relationship with my mother, that would do damage to you as my children. I don't want to do anything that would bring a reproach on my mentors, mm -hmm. right? Those who've went before me in the faith. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Lester Summer, Andrew Womack who's my mentor, who's alive and serving Jesus today. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to do anything that would bring disrespect and reproach on my church, mm -hmm. on the people that I serve in the congregation. I don't want to do anything that, who, that would bring reproach on those who I've served in Bible school and those who I've ministered to around the world. Mm -hmm. And last of all, I don't want to do anything that would bring reproach on the name of Jesus, my mm -hmm. witness in this world. Mm -hmm. And I remember years ago when we had a major leader fall here in Colorado Springs, you know, and I was on broadcasting on, on Christian television in a very simple way in those days. And I was standing in line at the, at the, at the grocery store and a man walked up behind me and said that fallen, that fallen leader was very well known. Mm -hmm. and, and he said, he just looked at me and then said his name. And it was like with disgust, oh, you're one of those. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't want to bring that kind of reproach mm -hmm. on the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But you know what? That man, whoever that was, I don't know who he was. One day he's going to stand before God. Mm -hmm. And I know somebody, you know, was actually bringing this up to their parents about how this person fell again, la, la, la. And he's actually using an excuse, I think, for his sorry way of living. Mm -hmm. But he's going to stand before God one day and there will be no excuse. Mm -hmm. Because you, don't, you stand before God on your own two feet, mm -hmm. right, on what you've done with Jesus or not done with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it's nobody else is going to take that blame. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, a lot of people want to blame, you know, a preacher, blame, you know, a minister of the gospel, blame a family, you know, a member. family member, you know, blame, you know, whoever, their boss, blame mm -hmm. their grandparents or their mm -hmm. parents. Listen. When you stand before God, it's not going to be about your parents, your grandparents, your, your pastor, 
you know, another minister of the gospel. It's not going to be about somebody you work for. It's not going to be about your brothers or sisters or someone else. It's going to be about what did you do personally with Jesus? Mm -hmm. The Bible says there is no excuse. Mm -hmm. The law was given that there wouldn't be any excuse. Mm -hmm. And Jesus made a way for you to live right before God. Amen. It's called grace. Amen. Amen. So I'm, I'm, that may not sound very gracious, but uh, you need to heed the gospel. Mm. Amen. Amen. We'll be right back after this break. We'll be talking about how grace teaches believers how to live the Christ life. Friends, I want to tell you about our grace package. I received a revelation of grace in Andrew Womack's ministry in 1994 after I'd been pastoring for six years. It revolutionized my life and it's helped me in so many different ways. I actually have been uh, called to preach and fill with the Holy Spirit in Andrew's ministry 16 years prior to that, but when I received a revelation of grace, it changed me. We've also included a great teaching from my son, Aaron Perdue, on the abundance of grace, a single CD on Entangled, a great message on grace from Aaron, and my series on Galatians, the grace of Christ. You don't want to miss this teaching. Just like it's revolutionized my life, it will revolutionize yours. You can share this with your friends. If you uh, don't want to call in and get this, you can actually listen to these free on our website at charischristiancenter.com. We want to get the word to you. Blessings. We've been sharing about how grace empowers you. You need the abundance of grace. I love grace. We see it all through scripture from Genesis to Revelation. Whenever God reveals his grace, it is always abundant. It's never in short supply. So we all need God's grace to empower us to live the Christ life. So let's go to Titus, actually. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. We've, we've been talking about how the law was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. But now that you're in Christ, you've graduated from law school. You are now in grace school. Grace is now your teacher. So uh, this really talks about this here in Titus chapter 2, starting in verse 11. It says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us. So I love that. You've talked about how grace, there's saving grace, but as a believer, you need grace to, to, to live life, to live the Amen. Christ life. And this word grace in the, in the Greek is the Greek word charis. We call our church charis Christian Center. Mm -hmm. And in the Strong's Concordance, uh, Abington Strong defines this word grace, grace charis in Titus 2 verse 11 as the divine influence on the heart hmm. and its reflection in the life. Amen. Amen. What a phenomenal And we uh, see definition. that here, especially in these verses, how it's reflected into our life. It says, grace, uh, verse 12, teaches us uh, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Now, when we look at this, okay, he says the grace of God, we could say who brings salvation. Mm -hmm has appeared to all men. So it's talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the embodiment of grace in John 1, 14. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus, we just read these scriptures in the first part of the broadcast. John 17, verse 19, he says, for this reason, for their sakes, I sanctify myself. Because Jesus wanted, right, to have a good witness. He mm -hmm. wanted his disciples to have a good testimony mm -hmm. and witness. And what we've been talking about now, he says, grace teaches us. So Jesus teaches us. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jesus is a great teacher. Grace, te the Holy Spirit is our teacher. Right. I mean, that's one of the one of the aspects of the Holy Spirit is he, he's there to teach us um, how to live in this present age. You know, the, the age that this was written was a it was a very dark time for Christians is a very worldly time, much like today. And um, as the world gets darker, you're just going to your light's just going to stand out brighter. Amen. And so as as grace teaches us uh, to live right in a wrong world. Mm -hmm. Right. He says we look for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank God we have hope in the gospel. Mm -hmm. Thank God. You know, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 19, he's talking about Christ coming. If we as believers do not have this hope, we are of all men most miserable. Mm -hmm. And so thank God for the hope of the gospel. Thank God mm -hmm. for heaven. Thank Amen. God for Jesus. Amen. So. Um, we're looking forward to the appearing of Jesus Christ who gave himself for us, this is verse 14, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. 
Speak these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you. Amen. I love that. So Jesus gave himself to purchase us, mm -hmm. to buy us back from all iniquity, all lawless deeds, your uh, New King James mm -hmm. says. And it says all or rebellion. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to live in rebellion. Mm -mm. I don't want to live in rebellion. You know, the Bible says that the way of the transgressor is hard. Mm -hmm. Some people think it's hard to live the Christian life. It's hard to live the Christian life if you're trying to do it in your own strength. Mm -hmm. You can't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a man tell me years ago, I was probably 15. Well, by then I might have been, you know, 17 years old. My daddy had passed away. And this man was driving me home one night and he says, well, I, I would become a Christian, but I just can't live it. And I said, listen, you don't have to live it. It's not you living it, it's Jesus who mm -hmm. lives this life through you. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and Paul says in Galatians 2 verse 20, I've been crucified with Christ. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Mm -hmm who loved me and gave himself for me. He says that in, in a sense in Galatians 2 verse 20, Paul's actually talking about death to the law. Mm -hmm. And he says, if I build those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Mm -hmm. He's talking about if I go back to the law to try to be justified. And trusting self, right, trusting ourself for performance is like going back to the law. But mm -hmm. we can't, we don't go back to the law. Mm -hmm. We just simply trust Jesus. And when we do that, then we realize it's not us, but it's him. Mm -hmm. I've been crucified. It's not, like, it's not really about me. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Nevertheless, I'm alive. Mm -hmm. Yet it's not me living, it's Christ who's living his life mm -hmm. in me. Paul says this in, in Colossians 1, verse 27. He says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Mm -hmm. We have the hope of the, of the manifested presence, power, and purpose of, of God in our life because Christ is living in us. Mm -hmm. He goes on and says in verse 29, I labor according to his working, which works in me mightily. Mm -hmm. I believe as you become focused on the Christ life on the inside and the Holy Spirit on the inside, on the, on the work of grace, mm -hmm. the work of grace that he called us, you know, he called us, he saved us, he mm -hmm. changed us, he, you know, completes us. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Jesus Christ in us who's doing the work. It's not. And I it's love that, that it says I'm I'm zealous for good works. You know. Yeah. Sometimes I hear people in in ministry who uh, kind of burn out. And uh, just just uh, not too long ago, I saw someone on Facebook who was a, a minister, and they, they uh, stepped down from their position, and they just said they needed a you know a couple of years to detox. Oh, that's terrible. They had burned out, and I was just kind of thinking about it. you know there isn't any letter from Paul just saying I just need a couple of years to detox from. Now he's saying, I'm zealous for good You know, I, and I'll tell you why I think that is. Mm -hmm. If you study the word ministry, right, mm -hmm. in, the, in the Bible, ministry really is three things. Most people think about ministry as going to the world, going to the world, going to the world. Go, mm -hmm. Jesus said, go into all the world. But I believe ministry starts with ministering to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Bible actually talks about the priest in the Old Testament. They were to minister to the Lord. The Bible talks in the Bible, when you study the word ministry or minister, it talks twice as much about ministering to the Lord mm -hmm. as it does ministering to one another mm -hmm. in, the, in the body of Christ. 1 Peter 4 verse 10, as every man has received the gift. We, you've all received the gift of salvation. Mm -hmm. You've all received different gifts as believers. So let him minister to one another. Mm -hmm. So first of all, our first ministry is to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then he says we minister to one another, mm -hmm. right? Then we go to the world. Mm -hmm. I believe that the reason most people burn out is they try to go to the world mm -hmm. without first ministering to the Lord, mm -hmm. right? Then without being ministered to in the body, in a body sense, mm -hmm. having people who minister to you, right? And then going to the world. Mm -hmm. So we're to go into all the world. We're to preach the, the, the gospel to every creature. But my first ministry responsibility is not the world. Mm -hmm. My first ministry responsibility is the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. We're called to exalt the Lord. We're called to edify one another, and we're called to evangelize the world. Mm -hmm. And I think if we keep ministry in that order, I think you avoid burnout. Mm -hmm. Lester Summerall get mad when people talked about burnout. Mm -hmm. Burnout! Who's burned out? <laughs> you know, yeah. He just, man, he was fired up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember one person was getting ready to go home to the Lord. And he said, he's talking about dying. He said, I want to live, live. 
live, live. I mean, the speakers were going. Mm -hmm. He said, this world's the only place you can win souls and, and, you know, do works for Jesus. And he was excited. He was over 80 years old. And a giant sense of purpose. Yes. Preaching the gospel and getting people saved. He preached over 300 meetings outside of his own church Mm -hmm. every year. Probably preached in over 300 cities. Mm -hmm. And, And then... And preaching his own home church 50 out of 52 Sundays a year. What a man of God. I'm so mm-hmm. glad that I got to, you know, spend time with Dr. Lester Sumrall, mm-hmm. have a good relationship, you know, with his son Steve today, with his, mm-hmm. his son um, Frank. We've had a good relationship with Peter. His uh, youngest son went home to be with the Lord. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but praise God, we had a good relationship with Peter. Mm-hmm. And so we respect, you know, all the investment that Dr. Mm-hmm. Sumrall made in you know over the years in his sons and in in the body of christ Mm -hmm. and he made in me dr lister summerall came to our church at kit carson Mm -hmm. you know not twice not once but twice he came and dedicated our building just about 15 months after we were there we built a new building and he came and dedicated it Mm -hmm. and then he came just about just a few months before he went home to be with jesus Mm -hmm. about six months before he went home to be with jesus that's awesome and we thank god for those who've gone before us and we want to be a good testimony Amen. Amen. Aaron, pray for the people. Yeah, I'm going to pray for you. Um, just uh, thank you, God, so much that your grace is there for them today, Lord. I just think that your grace is a teacher. Your grace teaches us how to live the life that you've meant for us to live, Lord. I just think that we are anointed with your light. We are anointed with your truth, anointed and sanctified by your word, Lord. And I just thank you that we can live through the power of your grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to say a great big thank you to all who tuned in to be with us today. Make sure you tell your friends about the broadcast. We're going to have special broadcast next week. Andrew Womack's going to be on with me, and we're going to be talking about the revelation of grace. You don't want to miss it. If you need prayer, if you want to become a partner, if you need product, just give us a call today. Or go to our website and check us out at karaschristiancenter.com. What is grace? What is the purpose of the law? And how do you appropriate God's grace in your life? Get answers to all these questions and more with the Grace Package. You'll receive the abundance of grace, the revelation of grace, Galatians, the grace of Christ, and Entangled CD series, all for $39. When you call 719-418-4000 or visit charischristiancenter.com. Friends, I certainly hope that you've enjoyed the program today and it's ministering to you to move into that which God has for you. And I wanna say a great big thank you to all of our partners for helping us share this gospel across the United States and across the world. It's because of our partners that we can take this message of grace and faith around the world. If you would like to join our partners and receive that blessing, give us a call today. Blessings. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast has been made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Or to partner online, go to charischristiancenter.com slash give. You can write us at P.O. Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.